welcome back for property number two today, the quotient property of logarithms. So instead of doing that ugly lettery proof that I did on the first one here, we're just going to look in an example so you guys can like believe it works, buy into it. It can be proven very similarly to what we did up there, but let's not belabor that point. So now our quotient, top and bottoms. If you remember back to your exponentials, which I will write that at least, we would have like b to the m over b to the n would equal b to the m minus n. And here m and n are the same things they were in that first proof. So if you work that all out, it does indeed come out to be this logarithm equation equality over here. But I want to show you the example here. I could not find equals with a question mark in equation editor. I was very annoyed. So we're going to write it in. All right. So is the log of 1,000 over 10 the same as the log of 1,000 minus the log of 10? Now, the nice thing is you can actually crunch this on your calculator because I used regular log. But we can also figure it out. So the log of 1,000 over 10 is really just log of 100. But we literally just talked about this in the last video. 100 is 10 squared. Regular log is log base 10. So this is log base 10 of 10 to the second power. And that all cancels out and we get two. Now other side, the log of 1000. Well, similarly to 100, that is a 10 power. And that is 10 to the third. And then the log of 10, well, this is really 10 to the first. So the same way, log base 10 of 10 to the canceled out, we are going to end up with 3 minus 1. And let's make that actually look like a 1, which is 2. So they are indeed equal. All right, so now I know if I'm taking the log of a fraction, I can break that into a set of differences or subtractions. But they like to use the fancy words, so they'll say, do this is a term of sums and differences. Hmm. So yeah, here we go. Write the logarithm as the difference of logarithms and simplify if possible. Assume that the variables represent positive real numbers. So, got a little more interesting here because I added in an extra one at the end here that's going to use more than one property because why not? Mostly because that's what your homework will start to do. All right, so here, the natural log of e over 10. All right, so. This will split into two logs instead. So the natural log of E and the natural log of 10. And anything that is on the bottom will get a minus, like a negative in front of it. You can't think of it as plus negative one times the natural log of 10. We'll talk about that on the next video. But that's how we're going to see it work. There's a number of ways to think through these and use these properties as long as you're comfortable with your exponents and your exponent properties. Here, though, the natural log of e, that is log base e. So log base e of e to the invisible 1 is 1 minus the natural log of 10. Now, the back of your brain may be like, natural log of 10, shouldn't that do something? Like, every time we have a 10, it does something. It would if we had log base 10, but we don't. We have natural log, which is log base e. There's no nice way to go between e and 10. e is a naturally occurring constant. 10 is it just a positional marker in the way we do our number system. So that's all she wrote for the first one. All right, more of the same. This is now going to be with log base threes of nine and log base three of x. We put the minus in front of the log base three of x because that was the thing on the bottom. All right, now this log base three and nine, 
I know nine. Nine and three get along. I know nine is three squared. So log base three of three to the cancel. And now it is just a two. So two minus log base three of x. And if it was the other way around, x over nine, we'd have log base three of x in front, and then it'd be minus two. And writing that can get a little tricksy. So you can, anytime you're writing a log, especially once you have a lot of variables, if you wanna put parentheses around what's actually inside the log, that's actually a good practice to have. Because on some problems, this is gonna make a difference. All right, now this last one, a little more interesting. So I do have log base 10 and I see a 10, yay. So let's start there. So we have the log of 10 minus cats, minus cats. Minus the log of EY. Why? Because I felt like being weird. All right, we know log base 10 of 10 is gonna be that invisible one. But over here, and this is a problem I made up, so the book would not have these directions with this problem. They would say, write this log as the sum or difference of logarithms. So here, the E times Y, that's the property we just did. Instead of division turning into subtraction, multiplication would turn into a sum. Here's the catch. This minus outside, I'm going to give it brackets because now I'm taking what was one thing and I'm turning it into a sum of two things. That minus still has to apply to both. So we have log of E plus log of Y. And then when we distribute that minus, so we have one minus log E minus log of Y. Now I want you to look at the initial fraction. If you look the 10 on top, this one is the same as log of 10. And then we had an E on the bottom and we had a Y on the bottom. We had those as two separate logs and they each got their own minus. So we're gonna have problems where you get a whole ugly mess and you just have to use all the log properties to break it all out and expand it. And then after we get real comfy doing that and expanding everything and making them really, really long, we're gonna turn everything around and do it backwards and shove it all back together. Because there are times when that is beneficial. All right, so we'll stop that one there.